Hey guys, good morning. Hope you're doing well. In today's Food Friday, I'm gonna to talk to you about breakfasts. You know, I get a lot of questions asked about breakfast. Uh, can you skip breakfast? What's the best type of breakfast to eat? All these types of things. Well, I'm gonna answer all of these, the top five questions. <laughs> asked a lot and it's uh, it's a question that I get asked a lot by you know busy people people sometimes rushing into work um, who often skip their breakfast and many of them feel quite guilty about it um, and they ask you know is it a bad thing to skip breakfast can I skip breakfast because um, you know you hear many times in the media especially that you know they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day well I, I want to put that into question um, it definitely is not the most important meal of the day um, it can be if in the sense that you know it can maybe set you up for you know if you have a good breakfast and you know you, you have a ritual in the morning where you know you you do your morning little routine and, you know in the bathroom you you have some morning you know power shake or whatever and you have your breakfast you know you, you have a good start to the day yeah? and if you start well you know you're likely to continue better whereas let's say if you skip breakfast again skipping breakfast is not a bad thing but let's say you, you you skip it and then you feel guilty about it and you feel bad that you've already started the day really well, chances are much harder you're gonna make uh, worse decisions later on in the day with your nutrition too. So so it's it's purely really in, in that mental sense that it you know it's it's maybe um, not always a good idea depending on how you think about it, you know, to skip it yes or no. So yeah, if you wanna skip your breakfast, if you feel better skipping your breakfast, you know that's pretty much what people that do intermittent fasting do, right? You know, some people that they only have their first meal at 12 o'clock or even two o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon. And then they eat during a period of six to 10 hours in the evening. They, they spread it out between one and three meals. And all those approaches work quite well. Uh, I, I've actually experimented with this a lot in the past. Like I, I tend to do a lot of 30 day trials where I'll, I'll try something for 30 days every single day, see what it does to me. And when I did intermittent fasting, and I, the first couple of days it was quite difficult, uh, you know, because your body has to adapt and stuff. And I felt really low energy. My training sucked. But after after about three days, I actually felt pretty amazing in the mornings, and I, and I was feeling much sharper, much more focused when I didn't have the breakfast. And I also felt that it kind of it has an effect on even the way that you think. So um, you know, during the period that I wasn't eating, so I, I fasted all night, all morning. I was feeling more alert and more focused, maybe also more analytical. Whereas then in the evening, you know, as I started eating more, and of course you eat bigger meals, um, you know, some carbs with that, I started to feel more creative in that part, but I wasn't feeling as focused and as sharp in my mind. So, um, so if you like to experiment with those type of things, you know, depending on what type of job even you have, you know, that can be like an, uh, an interesting approach for you too. It's not gonna have a, a major effect on fat loss or body composition. Um, yeah, you know, as I mentioned in, a, in another video, what will determine how, how much you lose in terms of fat or build muscle is your total calorie intake. That's the number one thing. Uh, not whether you have it in two meals or six meals. You know, this whole adage of, you know, the 80s, 90s bodybuilders saying you have to eat every two to three hours to keep your metabolism high. You know, that, that, that's rubbish. Yeah, you don't have to do that. So it's so when it comes to skipping meals, if it's a conscious skipping without feeling guilty about it and it, it suits your lifestyle more and you know you can make it into like a, a good habit, a good routine, then go for it. Another question that I get asked a lot is, uh, Alex, what breakfast should I eat? What is the best breakfast to start my day? And again, to this, I don't have, I'm not somebody who dogmatically says like, you know, this is what you have to eat. This is what everybody have, has to eat. Um, what I say is, you know, eat according to the goals that you have, eat according to the taste that you have, but, um, and eat according to what you're planning to do later on in the day when it comes to breakfast. So for example, when I have breakfast, um, to me, the most important thing is um, the next three, four, five hours that follow. Um, I wanna have high energy, I wanna have high and sustained energy, I want stable energy. Um, you know, many breakfasts where you're just having cornflakes or you know, some, some crispies or whatever with a lot of sugars, uh, no proteins, no fats. You know, you're gonna get a nice little uh, sh sugar rush, you can get a bit of energy, then you're gonna get that crash. You're gonna have to like continue the whole morning with some coffee. That's, that's not great for breakfast. It, not, not just you know energy wise, but also in terms of nutrition, you're not getting in a lot of vitamins, minerals. Um, you're you're not getting in a lot of proteins in the case of you know just some cereals and stuff. And um, 
but so, so when I look at a, a breakfast, um, one of the main things that it, that it needs to have is, as I said, the energy, but it also needs the right combination of proteins, carbs, and fats. So breakfast, as with any other meal that um, I, I recommend, is that you follow a certain nutritional habits. And, um, and one of those is to include a source of protein with every meal. Now this can be any type of source that you want, as long as it, it's a complete protein. Most animal sources of protein are complete. Um, vegans will have to be a little more careful, but you know, that's stuff for another video. Personally, my favorite breakfast, uh, believe it or not, it's not very common, but is, that, is actually to start with red meat, like an, a nice, you know, a big grass-fed steak or something like that, or some wild meat. Then have a, a bit of greens, which brings me to like the next uh, nutritional habit is to, to have a, you know some vegetables or um, or berries or at least a greens powder if you can get in some vegetables or some soup or something or some green shake with every meal also or almost every meal. It might be uh, you know it might be a little bit difficult around your workouts. You don't want all that fiber in your body you know before. So personally, I like to have either spinach or broccoli. You know, if I have a lot of time when I'm not making a shake or something. And then also what I recommend is a source of good fats. Um, again, here I'll, I'll take uh, walnuts or other type of nuts. If I take walnuts, I won't supplement with omega-3 um, because walnuts contain quite a bit of omega-3. But if I take like a, a piece of, you know, some almonds or pink nuts or something, then I'll get some extra fish oil with it. Um, and I re recommend omega-3 because most people are very deficient in omega-3. They, they have way too much omega-6 in their diet, which is you know, the most common type of fat. It's in most cooking oils and most nuts, most meat. But they're actually really low in omega-3. And ideally, you want a one-to-one omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. So omega-3 is also one of those things that you know, if you can't get it through real food like walnuts or flaxseed oil, I'll also supplement with it. And that's pretty much, you know, I, I won't take any that many more additional supplements you know with my breakfast really as i said this breakfast is not very common it's actually what i found to work best for me and even when it comes to breakfast i've done a lot of 30-day trials where i try like you know an oatmeal with whey protein breakfast where i'll try a normal breakfast um even you know the the, the old traditional breakfasts that are less healthy and this one with red meat personally i find like it helps me with my energy levels and focus in the morning the best i mean um of course, you know, the, the macronutrient ratio helps a lot. Um, I will sometimes add a bit of berries, you know, to get like a bit of extra carbs and glucose, you know, which you also need for the brain. Um, that can also help a little bit, but I'll, I'll keep carbs relatively low for my first meal of the day, usually. Unless I'm planning a training session, in which case I might have like an oatmeal and whey protein breakfast. Um, although I, I, I find that to be hit and miss. Sometimes like it powers my workout quite well. Other times I still do better with, you know, just, um, you know, a, a steak and nuts type of breakfast. But again, um, find out what, you know, my recommendation is to find out what works for you. Test out, you don't have to do 30 day trials, but try maybe a week of one type of breakfast, try maybe like an omelet with some salmon or something. Or if, if you're into salads, maybe like a salmon or, or chicken salad or something. I'd recommend like a piece of meat or fish or eggs, you know, some source of vegetable, at least one, some good fats, like some nuts or something, or you know, flaxseed or omega-3 or a combination of those. Or, you know, if you want a really fast breakfast, just have a shake, you know, just a bit of protein powder, some oats, maybe, you know, some berries and stuff, some flaxseed powder, some greens powder, and, and there you go. You have like a complete full breakfast that's going to keep you full and uh, powered for a long time. So another question that I get asked a lot is, Alex, uh, you know, should I have a high carb, low fat breakfast? Should I have a low fat, high carb breakfast? You know, which is best? And I've kind of given the answer a little in the, uh, in the question regarding uh, best breakfast. Um, you know, again, you've got to find what kind of works for you and also, um, you know, look at your body type. You know, if you're somebody who tolerates carbs very well, you know, you can have a high carb breakfast. There's nothing wrong with carbs. Um, I would recommend, of course, you know, quality carbs that are not just empty carbs like white bread and stuff and bagels and all of that. You know, you want to get some, you know, some grains, some oats, stuff like that, some berries in there. But, you know, if if you prefer, you know, if, if, you talk, if you're both fine with fats and with, with carbs, then, you know, you can also have a high fat, low carb breakfast, or you can have a medium fat, medium carb breakfast. It really, it's, it's not going to have that much of an effect on your body composition. What it may have an effect on is, as I said, like if you have, you know, some carb intolerances and you have like a very high sugar, low fat, low protein breakfast, then of course you're going to get like, you know, the energy spike and rush and you're going to get that crash, in which case I wouldn't recommend it. But, you know, it's again, you have to look at, you know, your body type, what, what works well for you, you know, give it a try. 
I would still recommend in any case you know, have high protein, at least you know a moderate amount of fat. And then the, the, the remainder, you know, if you, if you want a high carb, you know, that's fine. If you want to keep carbs low, that's fine. Seems to work better for me, you know, as, as I said, you know, the, the, the meat and nuts type of breakfast. Um, but again, some people do super well on, you know, the traditional bodybuilder breakfast, which is, you know, oatmeal and some whey protein. And, you know, if that works for you, then uh, go for it. Okay, another question that is super popular, and I'm sure like you've seen it posted a ton of times is, can you train on an empty stomach or do you need to eat something first? Now, I'll say first off, you know, when it comes to the science in this, you know, when it comes to goals for fat loss, it doesn't seem to make a difference. What makes a difference for fat loss is the total amount of calories you take in, the um, ratio between the different type of micronutrients, so proteins, fats, and carbs, how much you get in of those. Those two things are the most important. Nutrient timing and stuff like that to a lesser extent, very small extent really, but you know, whether you eat first and then train or you do it on an empty stomach that makes very very little difference now i will say there is some anecdotal evidence from people and in their experience they say some swear by you know doing some cardio on an empty stomach um, especially in final fat loss phases and you know that, that, that may we may work for some other people you know if they haven't eaten something first their training is terrible um, you know, they might train, but they might then feel super, super tired afterwards. And you know, if you're super tired, you're not going to be very active the rest of the day. So what's going to happen is you're not going to expend a lot of calories. You might have expended like some additional calories, like half an hour, 40 minutes during that training session, a tiny little bit. I, I'm talking about like a couple of percent of your total daily calorie expenditure. But then if the whole rest of the day you're, you're kind of lethargic and not, not moving, you know, your overall energy intake of that day might actually, uh, expenditure might actually be much lower, in which case I wouldn't recommend it. Another time when I wouldn't recommend it is when you're doing a high intensity exercise first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And why is that? Um, well, partly for the reason that I just mentioned, but also because, you know, super high intensity exercise, it doesn't just require a lot from your muscles and, uh, you know, your, your, your condition, but it also, you know, requires a lot from your central nervous system. And this is something that is, you know, overlooked so strongly, nobody talks about this. But if you're doing, you know, super high intensity exercises, your central nervous system is stimulated very, very strongly. And in the morning, you know, it's, it's, it's not functioning as well as later on during the day. Especially like if, if you don't give yourself, your body enough recovery, if you're not sleeping enough, and, and you're already low in body fat, you're low in muscle glycogen, um, you know, you're, you're low in calories and you've been like that for an extended period of time and then you're doing high intensity exercise every single day, you know, you, you're, you might be a wreck at times. And that, that's when, when I actually say, you know what, do something a little, uh, a little softer, you know, give your central nervous system a break so that your recovery is, uh, is better again. You know, sleep too, it's one of the most overlooked things, you know, most people focus on nutrition and training, but if you don't recover well, you know, it's, it's, it's also going to have a very negative impact on, you know, your, your body composition goals. Again, though, as with most things, you've got to find out what works for you and also what you enjoy and what you feel that you can continue doing every day. Because if, if you really hate what you're doing and you're dreading to, you know, train first in the morning and, and you know, the training makes you feel bad and the rest of the day you feel bad, you, it's something you're not going to sustain. Yeah, you might do it for a couple of days, but sooner or later, you know, you're going to give up on that, in which case the total results will be nothing. So yeah, find out what works best for you. Here I find personally, like when I'm in a, a final fat loss phase and I mean like I'm starting to reach single digit body fat percentage, then, then I'll sometimes do like a bit of morning cardio. I'll keep it light though, I'll keep it fun. I'll listen to like a podcast or something and, uh, and that will be kind of the start of my day where I'll go swim or something, you know, something like a little dynamic. Um, you know, just get the uh, the blood flowing, get get my body active and stuff, but not do something very intense. And I find for me that that works the best. And in the experience of a lot of my clients, that works really well for them too. Another question that I got asked was, Alex, what supplements do you take or do you recommend to take specifically in the morning? Now, when it comes to most supplements, they're, ex you know, except for like, you know, the intro workout supplements or sleep supplements, they don't actually matter that much as to when you take them. Of course, fat burners and stuff like that, you don't want to take them uh, in the evening before sleeping, of course. But um, the one supplement that I would take year round consistently in the morning and also throughout the day would be um, Omega-3. And um, 
And the, the reason is for that is, I mean, if, if I'm gonna have like, you know, salmon for breakfast, then I'll skip the omega-3, or if I'll have a lot of walnuts, I'll also skip omega-3, because those uh, two food items, they do contain omega-3. But other than that, there's not actually that many different food items, especially that are eaten regularly in the West that contain omega-3. And, um, you know, omega-3 is something that a lot of people are like majorly deficient in, but omega-3, I mean, the science, um, shows that it's actually it's it has so many benefits for all types of things for inflammation for joints uh, even against depression for brain function it's i mean the list is endless so um, some omega-3 would be like my number one recommendation and uh, if i'm not having omega-3 in my food i'll take a, a supplement and i'll have several capsules i'll take it quite a high dose um but I'll sometimes also take if if I'm you know short on time or like you know if, if I'm not able to have some like real green vegetables, it's some greens powder. And uh, what I tend to take is uh, total nutri greens, uh, but you know you can take any greens powder. And what what these basically are, it's a powdered version of wheatgrass, um, of um, different types of berries, of different types of vegetables. So you're really getting a super high concentration of. Um, you know vegetables and berries and stuff and and I'll just have that in a shake um, you know sometimes it's part of my morning ritual with some lemon water stuff like that uh, just to get in those extra vitamins and minerals um, I actually prefer taking vitamins and minerals this way they're more um, they're, they're more bioavailable like you're likely to absorb them more I mean I will take an uh, alpha men uh, a multivitamin um, even though like we don't absorb all of the the entire vitamin content of a vitamin pill you know we'll still absorb some and you know this is something i'll, I'll sometimes take it, it it kind of depends on you know whether i'm traveling or not am i getting in a lot of vegetables and and fruits if i am i'll skip on the the multivitamin but if i'm not i'll just take it as an extra little bonus or something but again this is not what i would call you know the multivitamin a staple supplement it's more of like an extra bonus the one that i really you know as i said recommend always is the omega-3 Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or suggestions, questions, just post them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks. Hi guys. Okay, I'm gonna show you today. <laughs> <laughs>